Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about the AKS-74U, commonly known as the Krinkov, but we're not gonna to get too deep into the history. I'll just briefly touch upon it, then we're gonna talk about these things from the US consumer market and their acceptance in the US consumer market, but also how the three different guns we have here stack up to each other in terms of the calibers they're chambered in. So up here on top, we have a classic AKS-74U. This was developed in the 1970s in the Soviet Union for Spetsnaz Special Operations. Uh, they turned their nose up at it. They didn't care for the gun much at all. During the Afghan-Soviet War, these became trophies by the Afghan soldiers, the Mujahideen that would capture them. But other than that, these were not very popular firearms within the Russian military. Many times you see tank crews or helicopter crews uh, using them. Matter of fact, the helicopter crews with the stock folded had little holsters they would wear on their legs to keep the AKS-74U on them. And you can find old pictures of those Soviet pilots carrying the rifles in that manner. So that's where it came from. We called it Krinkov. Nobody knows the origin of that nickname. That's not what the Russians called them. Again, it's the AKS-74U. But this whole gun became very popular in the United States. Soldier of Fortune uh, started talking about it in the early 1980s. And from then on, it just became popular in video games. And then uh, after 9-11, Osama bin Laden would be seen with one of these rifles somewhere in frame in just about every picture or video he appeared in. So it became a well-known icon in pop culture and um, around the world, really. But other firearms have evolved since the original design to appeal more to the U.S. consumer market, mostly as pistols. We have this stupid NFA laws that we have to deal with. This is technically an SBR, and inside this pouch is the paperwork for this gun. It was built by Rifle Dynamics, and this is one of those things that you have to register. You can't take it out of your state without getting permission, pay a $200 tax, have background check done, all that crazy stuff. But pistols would come along later, like this, this is a Bulgarian machined receiver, 7.62x39 uh, variant. And this one has an SB Tactical side folding brace on it. It has that same triangular stock look to it, but it's actually a brace for the pistol. Now this does not change the classification of this firearm. It's still a handgun. This is just a brace. And yes, I know that's being contested right now, but it's a long story. If you have one of these, don't worry about it. You're not breaking any laws, at least at the time recording this video. So this one is 7.62x39. Another one that we have out here this afternoon is in 5.56. Now this is one of my perfect personal favorites. This is a modern Bulgarian factory SBR, so everything on this is um, you know, made by Arsenal. It has the polymer side folding stock on it, and again it chambers 5.56. So we have an 8 inch barrel 5.45 by 39. We have an 8 inch barrel 5.56 by 45. And we have an 8-inch barreled 762 by 39. So we're going to shoot these, talk about them. And people, <laughs> I was watching an old video from Iraq veteran. It's nine years old. It's one of his earlier videos. And he called the Draco the ultimate truck gun. Would something like this truly be the ultimate truck gun? We'll touch upon that as well in this video. Of the three guns out here this afternoon, this is probably the most aesthetically pleasing. This is a classic Bulgarian AKS-74U. It is a beautiful gun, and this is the look that kind of invaded pop culture and made the Krinkoff kind of a household name. It's chambered in the original caliber, which is uh, 545 by 39, and it's very lightweight. The first thing you'll, you'll realize when you pick one of these up with, in the original configuration like this with its stamped receiver, these things are insanely lightweight. It would, I mean, it would make for a great backpacking gun and things like that. And the hope was, at least in military circles, that the uh, special forces would catch on to them and like them. But the ballistics, well, that's another story. They can use all the magazines that the RPK can use, 74 or the uh, AK-74 rifle, which includes 30 round magazines, 45 round magazines, drums, whatever you can stick in the magazine well. I like the feel of the original. I like how the stock folds and locks into place. It makes for a very small, handy little package. Of course, with this particular setup, we do not have the capability to mount optics on it because it doesn't have the, those facilities on the side, which would be correct 
for a AKS-74U of this time period. But the 74, this little guy, even in broad daylight, can produce some pretty enormous flashes. So if you're gonna use this in a vehicle as a truck gun, you better step out of the vehicle if you're gonna pull the trigger because the concussion off this thing is ferocious. And that's with its booster slash flash hider on the end of the barrel. Let's fire off a few rounds here. All right, that was just 10 rounds. I wanna show you guys something else. One of the things that people will talk about is the muzzle device itself. Keep in mind, the barrel stops right about here. You're tapping off gas right there. This is the gas block that's integrated with the front sight. So when you take this booster device off, some folks will say that the guns won't work right because this helps to create back pressure and to increase reliability. So there you see the very end of the barrel and its relationship to the gas block where it's tapping gas off generally you have a lot more barrel out there all right so what i've done is loaded up 20 rounds into another bakelite magazine this is still the red army standard stuff and let's just see how she works without her booster I can see those muzzle flashes. That's pretty ferocious, but the gun seems to run just fine. I don't run it without its booster very often, but when I've done it, I've never had a problem with the gun not working. Now, the other firearms that we have out here today have the four piece, sometimes called a hobo break on them. Yes, the weapon is clear. And they, in my opinion, perform a little bit better as flash suppressors and I think they look a little bit better as well. This is my Bulgarian factory 556 crank off, if you will, or AKS-74U, and this represents a more modern version of the rifle that uh, I like a lot with the wood and furniture and stuff like that, which is the Bulgarian uh, 545 by 39 rifle. This thing has very textured grips out here. Again, it still has that stamped receiver. Still uses the crink style sights, which you have the gas block with the sight integrated into it. You have the rear sight back here, and you have a little V-notch rear. We'll take one of them apart here for you because they disassemble the same. They all have the hinging top cover, stuff like that. But this gun feels pretty much just like the um, the other Bulgarian rifle, the SBR they have out here with its triangle folder, but this one is a little bit heavier. That's probably because this one does have the polymer side folding stock on it versus the lighter weight triangle. And I do have the hobo brake on here. Now this thing, guys, when it had its original booster on it, it was purely unpleasant to shoot. It was unpleasant to shoot when you were the one pulling the trigger and it was absolutely miserable being next to the thing uh, with somebody shooting it. I put this four piece brake on here and it really tamed it down. It, it made it more pleasant to shoot. You're not getting blasted with that concussion. And the recoil impulse on this is very similar to the 74, um, you know, in the 545 caliber. It, uh, it's very, very mild, very, very mild. The, the recoil on these is almost non-existent. This is gonna have a more limited magazine selection because it is in 5.56, but it loads just like any other AK. And I really, really like this one. This one has probably the worst trigger of the three guns out here. Uh, this one is, it almost feels like it's grit. I need to polish it. It'll pull, it'll hit a shelf, and then bang, it'll go off. And uh, the AKS-74U with the wood furniture, it just has a smooth trigger. It's polished, it just smooths. There's no wall, just crisp roll and break. And then the machine receiver pistol, that one will scare you every time it goes off. That's a bump firing machine. I mean, you just touch that trigger and bang, the thing goes off. You gotta be very careful with it. So they're all quite different in that department. All right. All right, so very, 
gentle recoil. This one again is modernized, so it does have the accessory rail on the side if you want to put optics on there. But keep in mind if you do that, because the side folder folds to the left, it's going to cover that up and it won't be able to be stored with the stock folded if you have a red dot sight. Plus, you have to be very careful. You're going to have to use something like an RS regulate mount and set that red dot back here when you slide it on because keep in mind, it can't set as far forward as you normally would set red dot sights because the rear sight and where the top cover hinges would be in the way. But overall, I really like the 5.56 version of the gun quite a bit. And the nice thing about 5.56 is it's an American caliber. 223 and 5.56 are abundant. You can find it even right now. It's expensive, but it's available. So 5.56 certainly has its benefits. This is the SAM 7K. This one is chambered in 7.62 by 39. This is also a Bulgarian firearm. So all three of the guns that we have out here are Bulgarian made. This one has the machined receiver, which makes it quite a bit heavier. It has a different contour on the pistol grip. You have the standard AK controls on the right-hand side, but also on the other side, you have a lever that you can use to manipulate the fire control. Now, it seems kind of counterintuitive. You pull back to fire, push forward to safe with your thumb, but it's easily done. Now, the thing that really attracts me to this gun is the sighting arrangement. You'll notice it still has its hinge point up here like the other two Bulgarian um, cranks, but the sight sets a little bit further back and we have an aperture sight back here which offers a vastly superior sight picture. So you have an aperture sight that uh, you can flip to a V-notch for CQB and for more precision work, you can flip it to the aperture. The other two just have that V-notch rear. You can make adjustments to the sight for windage back here and adjustments just like on the others. Uh, you can use the tip of a bullet or a tool to to screw that front sight up and down for elevation, but this one also has uh, the ability to drift that front sight. The rear sight being adjustable is a nice touch. Now, like I said, the gun is heavy. Now, when you go back to the early days of these types of guns coming in, like the Dracos and stuff like that, before braces became a thing, the other two are SBRs, this one's still a handgun. Before braces became a thing, this is how you'd have to shoot it. Imagine the brace isn't there. People were tight slinging them and trying to shoot them and shooting them from the hip. They just weren't practical. They were more or less toys because there was no practical way to use them. It's just kind of a spray and pray type of thing. And with cheap ammunition, it, I'm not going to lie to you, it's kind of fun to go out and just shoot dirt clods all afternoon and uh, not really, you know, try to aim too precisely, just to go out and pull the trigger and bump fire and things like that. And guns like this lended themselves to that type of fun. The brace changed the game. So here we have the SB Tactical Triangle brace that looks the part of a stock, but it's flexible and is a brace. So it has a strap on there, all that good stuff. So it does not change the classification of this handgun. On the back, it now has a pick rail. Early guns would either be just flat back there, or you would have a hole drilled for a single point mounting point for a sling, things like that. Now, with the braces becoming very popular, probably four million plus of them in circulation and being used by Americans right now, companies are starting to manufacture the guns to accept different types of braces. And I think of the three guns out here, this is probably the coolest one, it has the coolest features, most modernized one. Again, you have the option of putting optics over here, but with the rear sight where it is, I don't even know how that would work, so there's really no point to that. But I like the machine receiver. We have that uh, four-piece brake on it, and this thing's very smooth shooting. As I have previously mentioned, the trigger on this thing is so light that it will really surprise you when it goes off. But it's a very pleasant gun to shoot. Beard puller. All right, man, I lose more facial hair to braces and stocks and such, time to shave. But this thing definitely jumps around a bit more. Uh, the 5.45 and the 5.56, definitely more fun to shoot because you can shoot so quickly and the guns just don't move at all. This one has your typical AK rock to it because you're, you're lobbing that big heavy pull down that barrel but the quality and everything like that is definitely something I, I, I like. I like the ergonomics of the gun quite a bit. Would I fire this one in a truck? No. As a matter of fact, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I prefer to have a handgun, but if you want something to throw behind the seat, your pickup truck for use outside of the cab so you don't blow your drums out? Yeah, sure. Why not? Kind of cool.
this is the target of truth. We're using it as a chalkboard. All right, so what we've done is we've taken our three calibers and organized them from the most powerful to the least powerful in terms of ballistic performance based upon our lab radar data. Up top, we have our 762 by 39 round, which is a Golden Tiger, 124 grain bullet. At the muzzle, we have 1,967 feet per second, which gives us 1,065 foot-pounds of energy, again, at the muzzle. At 50 yards, we have 1,845 feet per second, which gives us 937 foot-pounds of energy. At 100 yards, we have 1,738 feet per second with 832 foot-pounds of energy at 100 yards. Next up is 556 by 45, a 55 grain ball round, which is an M193 military cartridge. At the muzzle, we have 2,530 feet per second with an energy of 782 foot-pounds of energy. We step that out to 50 yards. We still have 2,357 feet per second with 679 foot-pounds of energy. Move it out to 100 yards, 2,330 feet per second with 663 foot-pounds of energy. It's interesting to note that at the muzzle, the 5.56 out of its little eight inch barrel has 782 foot-pounds of energy, which is still less than what the 7.62 by 39 has at 100 yards. So the 7.62 by 39 has, a, has quite a bit more power than its two competitors here. And then tail end Sally would be our 5.45. This is a Red Army standard load made in Russia, 59 grain projectile. At the muzzle, we clocked it at 2,240 feet per second, which gives us 657 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Move that out to 50 yards, we have 2,116 feet per second with 587 foot-pounds of energy. We step that out to 100, we have 1,988 feet per second with 518 foot-pounds of energy. To put all this into perspective, we have three common popular handgun calibers, nine millimeter, with a 124 grain ball round at 1,150 feet per second gives us 364 foot-pounds of energy. 45 ACP with its 230 grain ball round, a military load at 850 feet per second, gives us 369 foot-pounds of energy. The 357 Magnum, one of the most popular loads for that particular caliber, 125 grain projectile doing 1,450 feet per second, gives us 584 foot-pounds of energy. So the 357 Magnum starts to look more like the 545, at least at the muzzle, but this helps put everything into perspective. You're losing quite a bit of velocity when you go from 16 inch barrels down to eight inch barrels. If we were doing the same test, which we may do later with 16 inch barrels, there would be substantially more power. But this is quite interesting, especially when you're taking a look at these three different calibers for your truck chopper or truck gun. You know what, guys? You know the drill. <laughs> yeah, no Glock mags either. Of the three guns that I have out here this afternoon, if we're talking about truck guns and things like that, the most practical for most people would most likely be the SAM 7K, which I have here. Now, when I was talking about how they field strip, they're all pretty much similar, and that's true, even though the SAM uh, 7K has this rear sight a little further back. It hinges open, just like any other crank-type firearm, and when you hinge this open, it retracts a little pin right there, allows you to take your gas tube off. How simple is that? And all three of the firearms out here this afternoon uh, disassemble and reassemble the exact same way. It's a very neat little gun, no matter what caliber you decide to go to, and uh, no matter what design you ultimately go with. So, with that being said, probably the most practical, probably my most beautiful, and probably my most fun. <laughs> Guys, if you enjoy these types of videos, please, in the comments down below, tell us about it. Please also like, share, and subscribe to the channel because it does help us with the algorithms here on YouTube. And even though we're getting squashed, it certainly helps when you guys help us with those algorithms. If you'd like to support us directly here at the Military Arms Channel because we are supported by you, not by the manufacturers, please swing by and check out our Patreon page. There's a link in the video description down below. Also, right here on the video player, as you're looking at it right now, there's a little join button just underneath that player, either on your mobile device or on your desktop. 
click that join button and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.